Hey everyone, great to connect with you again today. We're going to be inside for both services this week at 8.45 and 11. And uh, the 11 o'clock service will be streamed as usual. This Sunday, we're privileged to welcome John Ortlip, the founder and director of Ambassadors Football. John will be sharing about the impact of his organization around the world through soccer. In addition to our regular Sunday school classes for children, youth, and adults, John will be sharing during the Sunday school hour at 945 in the community room. I read an article recently that connected the idea of the kingdom of God as a mustard seed with an event recorded in the Old Testament prophets of Haggai and Zechariah. In the days of these prophets, some of the Israelites have returned to Jerusalem after 70 years in exile. They're excited to be back, but saddened to come back to a city that has been raised in a temple in ruins. Every symbol of their greatness as God's people has been laid low because of their rejection of God. But at the command of God, they began the work of rebuilding the walls and the city. And after some progress and some prodding from God, they start work on rebuilding the temple. It's an arduous and demanding task with much opposition. Yet their progress is amazing. But there's a problem. When they look at the temple now in comparison to what many remember it was before the exile, it's depressing. It seems like nothing. It doesn't have the same splendor as the former temple. It's so much smaller. They're glad that they have it, but it's so insignificant in comparison that it almost seems worthless. The prophet Zechariah is also on the scene while all this is taking place. Zechariah received the word from the Lord that says, do not despise these small beginnings. Into the people's discouragement comes a word from God. You cannot judge me and what I'm doing the same way everyone else judges. In this context that the writer of the article reminds us of Jesus' parable of the mustard seed, in which he says, how can I describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate it? It's like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It's the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of all garden plants. It grows long branches and birds can make nests in its shade. It's so easy to get caught up in the trap of how we judge. Like the Israelites and the disciples, we assess the value based on how impressive it looks or feels. Anything less feels not only insignificant, but almost useless. And then we pick up the pages of Scripture, and we are reminded that God loves to work in ways that are contrary to our thinking. He loves to use unorthodox circumstances and even unorthodox people to accomplish his purposes. The scriptures are full of people no one but God would have chosen. Abraham, Moses, Gideon, David, Peter, Paul. God uses people who are not in positions of great worldly power. God doesn't need perfect circumstances to reveal his kingdom or accomplish his kingdom purposes. The size or potential of our judgment doesn't limit God's ability to accomplish great things. In fact, God has a tendency to take the smallest of possibilities and do amazing things. You know, it's easy to feel overwhelmed with life, the weather, the pandemic. Perhaps your job is not what you want. Perhaps your family is not connected as you want. Maybe you're feeling small and insignificant. Perhaps you're wondering if life really has any meaning or purpose. Perhaps you see little hope for our world with all that's happening. In these moments, we need to hear these prophets. Don't despise small beginnings. Don't worry about what you can't do. Trust God for what he can do. The kingdom of God is not about how much we can impress people. It's not about how much we can accomplish. It's not about how great we are in the eyes of others. It's about who God is. And God keeps reminding us again and again and again that if we're willing, he can use us in ways that we could never imagine. Will we see the ways that we could never imagine in this lifetime? Perhaps, perhaps not. But that really isn't the point. The point is that God is at work when we realize it and when we don't, when we can see it and when we can't. The work that God is doing in us and through us may not be evident to us in this lifetime. 
But that doesn't make it any less significant. It might actually make it more. Father, thank you for your power and grace to take what is small and bring about what is great. Give us faith to believe and willingness to participate. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful day.